What's good, y'all? Leak auto repair. As we can see, y'all know what type of car, uh, vehicle this is. I was gonna say car, but apparently it's not a car. It's an SUV, 2008 Honda Pilot. I'll let you know what years uh, it go uh, up to or whatever. Uh, on this, uh, just gonna be doing an oil change, basic oil change for those who got Honda Pilots this generation and then the next generation. It falls the same, but pretty much an oil change is an oil change nowadays. So uh, when I do oil changes, uh, it's just, I don't bring, you don't need a crack a load of tools or nothing like that. There's only a few tools you need. Being as though I've done this job a million times and I worked at Honda before, I know exactly what I need to do the job, but it don't have to be because you worked at one place. It just comes from experience and just constantly working on the same product all the time. You know what tools to pull out and you know just make the job a lot faster. So most likely you're gonna be in your driveway. For me, I'm in a garage, so ain't nothing different. Uh, I'm using uh, a floor jack and the floor jack underneath, uh, I got it set up uh, on a subframe right there where you uh, hook up like a little toe hook up right there. You can put it there. Don't worry about damaging anything. It won't damage. You'll be good. Make sure you put your emergency brake on or put a, uh, a chalk in the back wheel so um, nothing, you know, it won't slide, but you should be good. Uh, I got uh, this cement, cement tub. Uh, I use this for oil because it holds a lot of oil. And uh, when, once I'm done with the oil, I put it in a bucket. I got another bucket inside. And then once they get filled, I just take it down to AutoZone and uh, they'll drain it for free. So if you don't know that, AutoZone gets rid of uh, your old oil. So be sure to take it there. Don't be that boy wasting it everywhere, getting uh, EPA, EPA up your ass or whatever. So yeah, just got my tub. I uh, got my creeper right here. I got this creeper from Harbor Freights. Uh, it's nothing to review on this. Just look it up in the magazine or uh, just Google it or go there and sell. It's always on sale for like maybe 30 bucks. That's why I got this for. Uh, you see my little heater too. Note that a new addition to the garage or to my tools or whatever. Uh, I basically, uh, I, yeah, I saw my other heater. I reviewed my propane blower. I use that for one. I got the doors open and I'm outside and I tarp the area up so I keep the. It's good for when I'm outside because I can blow the heat and you know, I'm good. I'm not ever cold with the propane one, but this is for when I keep the doors closed and this thing has definitely just been on for like five minutes and I'm cool in here. Overall, because it's hot pipes up in here or whatever. Uh, it don't be too uh, cold in here, but this one makes me like I could work comfortably and take my hoodie off and just work with like a single shirt or whatever and be cool. So it's a good thing about being closed up. So I'll tighten up in here, but that's for future. And then two, probably gonna ground my way out of here and get get a shop definitely. So that's definitely on the order. But let's talk about this oil change. So tools I use for the oil change. I got a couple lights I like to use. It don't matter what light you use. You're gonna be uh, you, you might be doing this in the dark. I don't know. You need to see, period. Light is always important. So I got two different type of lights. Uh, this is another light. This is my stream light. Um, I don't know why I got all three out, but I just want to have as much as light as possible, especially because I'm recording or whatever. But I got this ratchet. Uh, thanks, uh, John, Johnny, for sending this. I'm using this on my oil change for my oil change. But get you a ratchet with long re leverage or a nice long wrench or something. So that way, more le um, longer it is, the more leverage, the more torque, and that's a whole nother conversation. We ain't having that. But uh, the socket I use is a 3 uh 17 millimeter, and uh, I got my oil filter, uh, wrench pliers, and that's pretty much all I'm going to be uh, using just for the job. So let's get it started. All right, so probably set up under here. I got my jack stand under there. Make sure you got a jack stand. I'll be doing this job, and I don't want to hear, oh, I followed uh, a leaked video how-to, and I wanted to go do the oil change, and the car came down on me or whatever. I, I don't want to hear none of that or whatever. That's just going to be your fault up in the hospital because you ain't listening to me. Chalk the wheels up. Lock the wheels up. Get a jack stand popping or whatever. Get set up. Make sure this the jack is uh, tightened. The pole is not loose or nothing because if it start coming down on you, then I I don't know what to tell you. It's just going to be your fault. Whatever. So I'm just showing you how to do the oil change. This ain't my goddamn car. And your car ain't my goddamn car. So that means your problems ain't my goddamn problems. But I'm going to tell you. There is a drain plug. And you can't mess this up identifying because that right there is a transmission. 
this is the engine and on the uh, transmission drain plug is different you just put the ratchet head on there you good three eighths this one got a 17 millimeter bolt right here so if you just take I'm going to hook up my uh, ratchet and I'll break it free and we'll just drain the oil. So remember, whoever been following me for a good while, remember when I used to do videos with one hand, I guess I'm resorting back to doing that, but trying to batch out these videos, give you as much content as possible and stick to the auto repair stuff. So it is what it is. So cracked open the uh, bolt. If I had to show you how to break the bolt free or which way to go, then you don't need to be performing this oil change. But... If you're mechanically inclined, keep following the video. So we're going to beg off the drain plug. There is a washer that go in between. Make sure that washer goes back on. That helps stop the leak. Keep threatening back until like you feel it, uh, you know, the threat's completely coming off. And once you feel it about to come out, just hold on to the plug and then hurry up and then just move your hand out the way and let it pour into the uh, cement tub. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that part. All right, slot my slot your pan back, cause as the uh, engine level, uh, as the oil uh, level get low, it'll ease, uh, it'll start coming back towards, it start coming out of the pan pretty much. So keep adjusting the pan so you don't make a mess. But I want to let this drain, and I know a lot of oil ain't come out of this. This is one of those Hondas that got that oil consumption problem, but we ain't gonna get in it. I'm doing an oil change and leaving it at that. So. Leave it, let it drain for like 10 minutes and then come back. Once you get a slow drip like this, go ahead and put your drain plug back on. And remember I said to leave your washer on. It's going to be key for this job. So go ahead and get it threaded on. I like to hand tighten it first. Do it by hand. My camera refocus. And just snug it. And next I'm going to uh, this oil filter right here. should have been showed you guys that. But oil filters, you follow the pan up. And uh, I'm going to grab the oil filter wrench pliers and just lock it around and grab it tight and uh, just twist it off. Uh, if you're strong enough, you may be able to back this off by hand. But being installed, I was the last person that did the job. I know for a fact I did it tight. So I'm going to have to use the uh, the pliers to, to, to back it off. I can't believe I'm doing this all with one hand. So if I'm winging this job with one hand, you could do this job, anybody. So just grip it tight. I'm gonna twist it off. I'm to, I might have to cut this camera so I can. Hold on one second. And now, anybody want to key in on when I mention oil consumption problem? If Honda told you that, then most likely you have that engine that just need uh gotta get uh like a a rebuild. Uh, they just put new piston rings up in there or whatever. So uh. There's no way around that. It's, just, it's gonna have to get that done or just get rid of the car, period. O overall, it's a good car. I mean, for me, doing piston rings, I guess that would mean nothing for me because I'm a mechanic, right? But it is what it is. So that's a whole nother conversation. You take that up with Honda, but I think they do have a, uh, like a TSB or a recall, and I think they do cover it. So if your van falls under it, talk to Honda. I'm not sure if they still doing that though, because this car is a 2008. So I want to finish uh, untightening this, and then you just see me unscrewing it by hand. Make sure your tub is lined up, and twist it off. Some oil gonna come down like this. That's cool. You can put a rag under it. I'm not. Um, make sure the gasket that's on the oil filter itself. Uh, comes off of the uh, oil filter housing because if you uh, leave it on there to put a new uh, oil filter on there then basically you're doing a double gasket oil will piss out and you're going to be real unhappy about it so make sure uh, you be careful with that part so I'm going to go ahead and install the new filter I don't need to be telling you what filter to grab because you should have got the right one from wherever you're getting your parts from so you should be good at this point so just uh, lube up the oil take your finger if your fingers look like this and lube up the ring around the oil filter. I can't do it because I got, matter of fact, I, I'll show you, hold on. Basically, take some oil and lube, like, just go around it. Lube this up. It's just, so that way the next mechanic or you for when you do your next oil change, you can get it off. You don't have to put a lot on, but if it looks like this, then you cool. And then it helps break free. 
for when you are trying to like take it off so it doesn't matter who does it just you don't want it to be a pain in the ass coming off so just lube it alright so just going back on just like that and then uh, tightening this everyone always curious on how tight this should be that along with the drain plug um, the drain plug as soon as it stops, I take the ratchet and then just snug it a little. And you shouldn't over tighten drain plugs because that's how you mess up the threads in the first place. So just be careful. And uh, this I always tighten by hand, of course. I just uh, just turn it until it's not until it turns no more until uh, as soon as it stops, just give it like another two or three more turns, small turns and in increments, like maybe like a quarter of an inch in turns or something like that and you good I can't tighten this uh, I, I let me clean my gloves off first and then I'll, I'll show you how we do everything so with the shop rag shop towel whatever how you want to do it um I got a little oil on my damn fucking arm I'm ready to freak out now I, I don't like this hold on one second all right I feel a lot better now all right so I always use like a rag to give it a you know more better grip if you want to take your gloves off that's you I don't take my gloves off cuz I'm not with that so see how it's resistant and then just a little snug and that's it that's it now I want to take my ratchet yeah <laughs> shout out to Johnny for this ratchet yo you, you was clutch on this cuz I really like this especially when I did a belt the other day came through so oh mind you I'm doing one hand so I'm gonna snug it just like that and that's I'm done so make sure you clean up everything I'm gonna take some brake cleaner spray up in here spray up on the subframe right here spray up around the oil for the house in a little bit and uh, wipe it down with your towel rag and uh, we're gonna go fill uh, up the engine. All right, next, uh, I got the oil cap off. I should have told you that in the beginning. Uh, first thing I always do when I do oil change before I even uh, initiate the job, I always take off the oil cap and uh, place the oil cap like right over here. Um, just a little advice that was shown to me before, just in case uh, you forget to put oil in a car, you slam the hood down, you broke the cap, or the hood won't close because the cap is in the way all of that is just a little fail safe pre prevent you from getting to uh fill up the engine uh with oil so you'd rather break a, a cap that's uh that's gonna cost maybe 20 30 bucks or a little bit less than that or you want to ruin the engine that's gonna cost a couple thousand dollars you do the math so this look like a good fail safe for me so just beginning i always take it off first you don't have to but i didn't miss the steps and everything it is what it is so, uh, remove the cap, uh, get you a little funnel, uh, my funnel game suspect, but I got this little funnel orange kit, funnel crap from, uh, Harbor Freight, it is what it is, I'm gonna make this joint work, that's all that matters, so, um, maybe I'm gonna set my, uh, tripod up over here, so that way, um, I can get this, uh, poured in here, but, uh, oil I'm working with is this Castro, um, high mileage one, this car is over 100,000. It don't matter if it's like high mileage or not. Uh, when they say high mileage, all that means is just got like different type of uh, detergents up in there or whatever. So that's all it is. But oil is oil at the end of the day to me sometimes. So uh, using uh, 20 weight 5W20 um, as it reads uh, on the cap. So it's dummy proof. So it says that right there. So you good. Does that look like a match right there? Looks like a match right there. So, um, this engine, the 3.5 engine, takes roughly about four and a half quarts of oil. Uh, this jug right here is uh, five quarts, so we got rum in case we need extra. We should probably might need extra. Some cars may need extra. Some cars don't need as much as you should be putting in there. It all depends on how much comes out or whatever. So, I'm going to fill that up. I want to put about four and a half. So, I want to, like, maybe... Uh, stop maybe until I get about uh, roughly around this area and then just keep checking the dipstick um, if you don't know how to check your uh, engine oil uh, I got a video uh, following uh, after this that show you 
or I'll try to put this in the same playlist or whatever to show you how to check your engine uh, oil level. But I ain't going to get into that. I'm just showing you how to change the oil or whatever. So at this video, you got a question. Dang, he showed me how to change the oil, but he ain't showing me how to change the level. I got another video for you to watch. That's cool. So just check out uh, in the end screen. It'd be like a video and just click on it and you'll be good. So I'm going to go ahead and set the tripod up real quick. Now, mind you, I set my funnel game suspect, so y'all want to go ahead and crack on me. It's cool. You got a problem, then you can cash at me some money, so that will, or you can super chat me some money, so that way uh, I got money to get me uh, a new funnel. Other than that, you mind your business. Now, this cap is on tight. I don't know what's up with them. Make sure you break away this aluminum uh, seal that they got. You don't want that in the way uh, uh, when you pouring the oil out. That'll affect your pouring and it'll start splattering everywhere. So, so be extra careful. So I'm going to come in through the right because I'm a righty boy. I didn't already spill some. So make sure I got a, that's cool. I got brake cleaner. I'm going to run it up on, on the side. But just aim it in there and you cool. You're going to spill a little oil. It happens, but just make sure you clean it up. So I'm going to hurry up and get this in there. You, I don't want you to hurry up because you're going to make a mess, but I'm hurrying up because I want to catch this, uh, this this little drip that's about to go down. Some of it spilled on my glove and then ease its way back into the funnels, but for the most part, uh, I'm good. So, um, I'm going to leave this amount in there where it says 0.5 and then I'm going to lower the car real quick. I should have been to that and I'm going to check the oil level, but um, I'm going to clean up. I just got a little bit on the side right here to clean up. All right, I'm in there. I'm cool. So, right here too. All right, I'm gonna uh, check the. Uh, I'm gonna lower this card down real quick. Hold on. All right, so I put the cap on. Try to clean this off. Like I said, I'm gonna hit it with some brake cleaner. You make sure it dry up or whatever. Never leave like. Spray brake cleaner and then uh, leave the area wet. That's just not good because brake cleaner is flammable. You don't want it to hit like a ground or something like that. Because I did have that happen before. So I'm going to crank the car and I'm going to run it for a couple seconds. When you do that, go on underneath the car while I'm running and make sure you ain't got no oil leaks where you took the oil filter off and open out the drain plug. So make sure that cool. So I'm going to run it for a couple seconds and then shut it off. You pretty much um, Hondas you really don't have to uh, wait too long like Nissan's you got to wait like almost like five minutes to check the distic because that's how long it takes for uh, the oil to get back to the pan Hondas don't really have that problem you can check it almost instantly but if you want to wait like 60 seconds just to let gravity do its job that's up to you me I don't be waiting like that I felt like I waited enough so pull the dipstick out this orange thing right here pull it out be careful because the tip is plastic um, if you see oil on there you should see oil on the stick if you ain't see oil on the stick most likely you left something open at the bottom and it probably didn't pour it outside let me stop being sarcastic but as long as everything tight you cool so I wipe the dipstick off clean like I said I'll show you uh, leave in the end screen a uh, video you can watch on checking the oil levels but uh, if you can see I hope you can see uh, the oil level is pretty much uh, if it's low at this line. It's supposed to be in between uh, this line and this line right here. And uh, this cross hatching in the center really is supposed to be like in the center within this range pretty much. So if it falls below this low line, then uh, you need to add some oil to bring it back up. Uh, I would never cry about an oil if it's in a but if it's in the center, but just bring it back up to the, the, the highest line right here and you good. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in and check. Make sure it's clean. Leave it in for a second. Pull it out. Um, look like um, I look like I'm in range, but I need to, I, I do want to add more oil up in here since it got an oil consumption problem. So I'm going to add the whole thing, the rest of it in there. And I'm going to check the level again. I literally uh, emptied out the jug, so all five 
ports that's now and then there. This is right here. Wipe my dipstick off. It fell on the ground. Make sure your dipstick is clean at all times. Put my oil cap back on. Sometimes I like to put a rag over the, or uh, leave the funnel in there and put a rag over the hole. Some cars are sensitive where it indicates a lean condition. Be careful, but that's another conversation. So, uh, leave this dipstick in here. I'm gonna fire the car over. Let it run for a second and then check again. can't see it but I can um, I'm exactly where I need to be so that concludes this case for me so make sure everything is cleaned up make sure everything is tight nothing is left loose you made a mess clean the mess up don't cry about it get it done I'm trying to find that's a shop top I did take care of underneath I didn't show need to show you guys me cleaning it because I felt like that's irrelevant even though it is relevant but uh, it is what it is. So I'm gonna go to repair. Uh, oh, wait, no, I'm not even done. I gotta show you how to reset the uh, oil light. So one second. All right, on these Hondas, it could be a Honda Accord, Honda Civic. Most of them are the same. You'll know when you know. But uh, to reset the oil light, and especially if you got like the wrench flashing with like 10% and they got like a letter or A or B on it, let you know what service to do. Uh, this is just a procedure on uh, just resetting the light. So put the key in the on position. Do not fire it. Key on, engine off. Um, I mean, static radio. Cool. As long as no music play because that'll mess up me up for monetization. So it works out either way. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, hold on uh, to this uh, button right here for the uh, odometer joint. So hold it in. And uh, you're going to hold it in long enough until uh, the whole oil light. Uh, start uh, flashing so just keep holding it may take a little minute so let go once it start flashing and then you're gonna hold it down again and then uh, it should it should go off on its own let's reset so let go and then uh, cycle back and you should see a hundred percent oil life so we cool so I'm gonna go to repair um, no need to explain everything you see everything in the text want to send me stuff Follow the, uh, the, my P.O. Box on the side, shirts, questions, Instagram, all that good stuff. I'm tired for me. It's uh, literally 12.32 a.m. I'm about to pull in another car, Chevy Volt, and uh, not Chevy Volt, Chevy Cruze. And I want to check to see why uh, it runs the way it runs. Check engine light issue. Sound like some type of vacuum leak. So I'm only going to proud highlight y'all.